We're at PDAC 2023. I'm on the floor here with Chris Berlay from Mineral Funds. How are you today? I'm well, thank you, Tracy. What are Mineral Funds? Uh, we track uh, 114 funds very carefully, 100 gold funds, 101 gold funds, five silver equity funds, two exploration funds, and six battery metal funds, the fastest growing sector. Uh, the gold funds, 101 gold funds worldwide, that's all the gold funds in the world, managed gold funds. It's a $30 billion in assets under management. $12 billion of that's in the United States, 40% of the market. But why are you tracking gold funds? Tell our audience why. The real reason is uh, there's some inefficiencies in the market that we can capitalize on. All right. So what kind of inefficiencies and why does an investor want your information on tracking gold funds? I'll give you a couple examples of inefficiencies and then I'll talk about why they would want to track the uh, gold funds, the asset allocations for the gold funds. So one is uh, Japan has no gold funds. And Japan is a $5 trillion economy, uh, has a debt to GDP of 264%, the biggest monetary experiment uh, on, on the planet today, and no gold funds. Um, so there's a market opportunity. They have no listed gold companies. Uh, and there's an example where they raised a tremendous amount of money for gold and gave it to an external asset manager. So there's an opportunity, that type of opportunity. The other, the other thing is that if you look at the if you look at the investments of these 100 gold funds, 55% of the money goes to Canada, but only 7% of the money is managed in Canada. So there could be some comparative advantage for, for local uh, knowledge. I mean, at PDAC, there's literally hundreds of companies that are here that represent exploration plays. And again, only 7% of the money is managed in Canada, and yet 55% of the money is invested in Canada. Second biggest jurisdiction is Australia with 15% of the money. No funds, no specialist gold funds. So the reason, though, this being the case, that, they, that the real reason is that portfolio investments made by these gold funds usually uh, carry on in the same companies for two to three years. They have low portfolio turnover, lower portfolio turnover than standard equity portfolios because the investment managers running the gold funds, they become familiar with management teams, they like them, they invest in them, they support them over the longer term, and it takes them two to three years to execute on their business strategy. But the disclosure requirements of the funds are governed by the laws of mutual funds and SICAVs in Luxembourg. So they report their full asset allocations semi-annually in the United States and Canada, and, and with semi-annual and annual reports, and in SICAVs in Luxembourg also, semi-annually and annually. So, um, and in 13F, uh, they, they 100 funds and uh, 13F requirements for, uh, greater than $100 million require monthly exposure, uh, disclosure for their full asset allocations. Today, five gold funds report their full asset allocations on a monthly basis, and yet they, 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 their hold periods are much longer than standard equity portfolios. So you can get some significant comparative advantage by looking at the holdings of these funds, and in particular, new names in a rallying gold market. Okay, so if I have this right, your gold fund report basically monitors who's got what in what gold fund, is that correct? Yes. Okay, and how do I subscribe to this? Because this sounds like a fascinating, I, 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 I get the intel here. How do I get and how do I become a member so that I can receive your gold fund updates? Well, we, we're doing that online through mineral funds and we're, we're researching and, and publishing the asset allocations and then analyzing them. Well, clearly, we at Investor Intel are very interested in this particular update. For instance, I mean, why, do, why does Japan not have any gold funds? So we're definitely going to do some follow-ups uh, here with you. But right now, today, at this moment in time, can you give us one or two really interesting things that you're seeing, the trends that you are watching with your mineral funds with gold? Okay. Um... So the new names, uh, Vanek picked up on a new name for us about four months ago. We looked into it. We got a cheaper entry price in Vanek, which was the first fund. It's G2, which is the successor to Guyana Goldfields. Vanek was the first fund investor. 
And we looked at it the month after they made the investment, we got it at a cheaper price point. None of the other funds have picked up on it yet, but it's a fantastic company run by Pat Sheridan who had great success in Guyana. So we understood and, and we're capitalizing on the best knowledge in the business. Joe Foster and uh, um, Imaru uh, Casanova have seen two, three gold cycles. They have fantastic depths of knowledge. In every instance in these gold funds, they have a great deal of knowledge of the gold sector. So we're getting that information by looking at their asset allocations. Another great example, would be Steve Calhoun for Fidelity Fund. He picked up on the Cisco development first and uh, New Pacific Minerals. It was immediately evident. We look at that portfolio on a monthly basis. Okay, but are you seeing an increase in interest in gold or decrease? Can you tell that by looking at the asset allocation? What, what, there is an increase in interest in gold. You see central bank buying. You see lots of evidence of interest in the gold sector and a significant inflation problem that's coming that's here now and coming and, and is manifesting itself. The, the reality is gold ounces in the ground are cheapest in gold equities and the, the gold equities ultimately reflect much stronger performance than gold bullion itself in a rallying gold market. So you're going to want to be looking at these portfolios and their asset allocations for, for, to capitalize on the knowledge of those 100 fund managers that really have a, a great deal of a depth of knowledge of the gold sector. Well, we certainly want to capitalize on opportunities like this. So, Chris, thank you so much for joining us from Mineral Funds today. Thank you, Tracy.